Good day, students. This is the second class on internal regulation on eustasis 2, and I'll be talking about the liver. Remember, we've talked about two main organs, the lungs and the kidney in the previous class. So we want to see how the liver performs the function of internal regulation, maintaining internal regulation. So the liver itself is a pink bilobed organ that is located below the diaphragm. It is highly vascularized with blood vessels. That means it has lots of blood vessels that gives it its reddish color. So the main function of homeostasis is that it regulates the amount of nutrients which reach the blood and the tissue fluid. So when nutrients are being channeled into the liver, the liver regulates the amount that is being released into the blood. So this is achieved by absorbing and storing the nutrients which it receives and then release it into the circulatory system at the rate which depends upon the body's current need. So the way the body needs it is the way the liver now releases it into the system, having stored those nutrients. So the, it is very important, we know that uh, maintenance of constant um, internal environment is very important and the liver is one key organ that performs that function. So how the major function of the liver are one, regulation of blood sugar, two, regulation of protein, three, fat metabolism, storage of blood, removal of poison from the blood um, and uh, formation of blood. It also helps in breakdown of red blood cells. Even inactivation of hormone and um, production of it. This is the structure of the liver. The liver is the largest internal organ. If we talk about the skin, the skin will be the largest external organ, but internal organ, the liver is the largest organ. So it is bilobed, as we can see, and it is highly vascularized. When this is cut into two, it is highly vascularized. You can see that it is very close to the gallbladder. It, the liver produces bile that is being stored in this gallbladder. The bile is very useful in administration of fats during digestion. So this is the duodenum, this is the pancreas. <clears throat> These are associated organs with the liver. Now the function of the liver, I want us to explain it one after the other. The first one is regulation of blood sugar in the blood. How the, the liver itself has the responsibility of maintaining a normal glucose level. The normal glucose level is about 85 milligram per 100 centimeter cube of blood. So after we eat uh, a carbohydrate food, it is being broken down and the end product is glucose. So the glucose level may rise in the blood. So it is the liver that has the a responsibility of maintaining it. Sometimes when the, the glucose level falls below 40 milligram per 100 centimeter cube of blood, then the brain cells will be affected. Maybe one is fasting, that's not, he has not eaten for a long period of time and the glucose level has to reduce to that level, then the brain cells will be affected, which can lead to coma. So the liver controls blood glucose level and keeps it within normal by following some mechanism. Now the first mechanism um, the liver employs is that it converts excess glucose in the blood. If there's an excess glucose in the blood, it converts it to glycogen and the glycogen is stored in the liver. And that conversion is done by the hormone called insulin produced by the pancreas. When the blood glucose is below the normal, the liver also converts the glycogen that has been stored, it's converted back into glucose so that the body can have glucose. As we know that glucose supplies energy and helps the normal functioning of the body. So the conversion is also stimulated by another type of hormone called glucagon that is released by the pancreas. So if the glycogen level in the blood is depleted, the low glucose level in the blood synthesizes the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus here is a part of the brain 
that controls these uh, homeostatic processes. So the hypothalamus stimulates the production of different types of hormones. And those hormones now tells the liver to convert amino acids and glycerol into glucose. So the liver is the one that maintains the amount of glucose in the, level, in, the, in the blood. When it is too much, convert it back to glycogen. When it is not enough, convert the glycogen back to glucose. Even when there is no glycogen at all, the liver can make use of amino acids that is gotten from protein and glycerol, which are uh, fat derivative, and convert it back to glucose. Another function of the liver is regulation of proteins. Proteins like our beans, like our, our meat and the rest of it, when we eat it, they are broken down into amino acids. So those amino acids, they are collected in the liver and released in small, small amounts uh, into the general circulation. So the amino acid cannot be stored. The excess will be broken down by the liver into carboxylic compounds and amino compounds. So the amino compounds containing nitrogen can be further broken down into urea. When we were explaining, when I was explaining um, kidney, I said the kidney process is urea to form urine. So it is the liver that breaks down excess amino acid to release urea. Other carbon, carbon compounds can also be converted into glucose, glycogen, and fat. So those two processes by which the liver converts uh, excess amino acid into urea and carbon compounds, they are called deamination. And uh, for a short definition, deamination is the breakdown or conversion of excess amino acids into amino, into ammonia, sorry, ammonia. And finally, to urea and other compounds, like I've mentioned, glycogen and fats. The liver also manufactures the main, some proteins that are called plasma proteins from amino acids that is being derived from digestion of proteins. So those plasma proteins, they are albumin, globulins, and uh, fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is necessary in blood clotting. So the liver can produce those protein from amino acid. It can also regulate the amount of protein by converting excess amino acids into urea and carbon compounds. Another function of the liver is fat metabolism. And um, what the liver does is that it breaks down lipids to produce glucose. If required by the body, the excess lipids are tr transferred to fat storage parts of the body. So by the time um, the liver breaks down the excess um, lipids to form glucose, and by the time the glucose is not necessary again, it can convert it back to glycogen and the glycogen will be stored as fat layers. So the liver can also convert glucose to glycogen. And when the glycogen storing capacity is exceeded, the excess is converted to fats for storage. The liver manufacture bile, which is stored in the gallbladder. I've shown you the picture of the gallbladder is very close to the liver. So the bile contains inorganic salts and cholesterol bilirubin. Vitamins and minerals are essential for good health and they are also stored in the liver. So the fat soluble vitamins are vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. The water-soluble vitamins are vitamin B and C. Then other minerals include iron, zinc, copper, and potassium. These are the minerals that are stored and vitamins that are stored in the liver. The liver can also store blood. The liver, which is richly supplied with blood vessels, can store as much as 1,005 centimeter cube of blood when the blood vessels are dilated. When these blood vessels are constricted, however, the blood is forced into the general circulation. So the liver therefore regulates the amount and the pressure of blood into the body. So because the liver has the capacity of storing blood when the blood vessels are dilated, and when they are constricted again, they are released back into the circulation. Formation and breakdown of red blood cells is also one of the functions of the liver. 
The liver can manufacture red blood cells in the fetus and even in adults. The liver and the spleen can break down one out red blood cells to produce the bilirubin, which is one of the things that is being stored in the bile, that is, being, that is present in the bile and stored in the gallbladder. Now, removal of poisons from the blood. The liver can also do that. The toxic materials gotten from food or from drug can be um, excreted out from the body. And that process is called detoxification. And the following are substances that are rendered harmless by the body. Some toxic substances produced by the large intestines, by the activities of bacteria during digestion, you know, those toxic substances can be broken down or detoxified in the liver. Drugs and medicine, sometimes like uh, in this season of uh, COVID-19, many people that do not even have the symptoms will begin to take drug. Those drugs might not be needed in the body and can be toxic to the body. So the liver performs that function of detoxifying those drugs and medicine that are not useful or that have that release toxic material. Some food and preservatives, like we eat a lot of um, food that are very rich in additive and preservatives, cake, colors, and all those things, the body cannot break it down. So they are toxic to the body, but thank God for the liver that performs the function of detoxification. Even some water and hair bone pollutants, imagine the kind of pollutants we expose ourselves to every day. Thank God for the liver that performs the function of removing poisons from our blood. In addition to this series of functions that we have talked about, the liver can also inactivate uh, some hormones. So, you know, hormones have performed a lot of work in homeostasis. So some are released in large quantity, and by the time the body takes the necessary one, the liver inactivates those hormones. So it exerts a mosaic effect on the activity of hormones by inactivating the activities of hormones secreted into the blood. It can also produce, the liver can also produce heat. As we know that maintaining constant heat is one of the function of uh, homeostasis. Liver's numerous metabolic activities generate heat. Like we've talked about several metabolic activities, production of proteins, regulation of uh, those things generate heat, which is distributed throughout the blood um, circulation and it keeps the body warm. Now, when uh, the liver is uh, not functioning well, there are some symptoms we need to watch out for. John, this is one of them. Weakness and tiredness, fever, like begin to feel uh, weak in the bone, um, high temperature, then tenderness to bruises and bleeding easily. Odema, we talked about Odema when we mentioned when we were explaining kidney in our previous uh, presentation, is also one of the symptoms of the disease of the liver. Then enlarged and tender liver, that can be done by um, internal examination. Even high blood pressure could be a, a, a symptoms, a sign that something is wrong with the liver. Now, when we talk about the liver disease. Liver disease manifests when liver cells fail to perform their functions properly. We have talked about series of functions that is being performed by the liver. So if anything goes wrong that the liver cannot perform those functions, then there's a problem with the liver. And um, I've mentioned jaundice as one of the symptoms. It can also be one of the disease. How do you know? It is not just a child, a small child that have jaundice. I know that when we give birth to babies, some babies develop jaundice, but adults too can have jaundice as a sign of liver disease. And it is the yellow coloration of skin and um, the white part of the eyes due to increased production of bile pigment called bilirubin. So when you notice, when you, have, you, notice, you see a person with yellowish coloration of skin, the skin has become pale, yellow, and the white part of the eyes is not white, that's become yellow. That means a person have high production of um, bile pigments. So the increased production of bile can be caused by what can result into increased production of bile. There are one, excessive breakdown of blood cells, red blood cells. As you know, we have said that the function performs, the liver performs that function of breaking down red blood cells. 
But when we have excessive breakdown, then we will have high production of bilirubin in the liver, and it will lead to jaundice. When we have obstruction of the bile ducts, the bile duct is being blocked, it will also lead to jaundice. Then when we have any disease of the liver, the first thing that it will, that the first sign to watch out for is the jaundice. So other disease of the liver include um, viral hepatitis. Hepatitis could be hepatitis A, could be hepatitis B, could be C. I think the C is even more dangerous than A. And um, it could be an infection of the liver through the food we eat. In fact, some could be transmitted, some um, type of hepatitis could be transmitted from infected blood through blood transfusion, injections, and sexual intercourse. So we see uh, a liver that has been infected by hepatitis. Hepatitis infection could be viral, could be bacterial, could be fungi, could be parasitic. These are the um, major causes of um, pathogens that can cause diseases. So these are the effects on the liver. You can see that it's changing from um, normal to this. So this is at the, by the time they perform physical uh, examination of the liver, they see this, they know that there's a case of hepatitis. Another liver disease is what we call amoebic liver abscess. And it is caused by a protozoan parasite, enter amoeba histolytica. What it does is that it burrows into the tissue liver and destroys it forming abscess within it. We can see an abscess here in the tissue liver. You can see, it can even have a pus inside. So the, amoeba, the parasite, amoeba histolytical, has eaten up this part, forming an abscess. So it's a major um, disease that can also be taken care of by the professionals, the doctors. Okay, another liver disease is gallstones. When a crystalline solid of cholesterol that are formed in the gallbladder form um, solids due to abnormal formation of bad. You know, bad, this is the gallbladder. This is the gallbladder that is very close to the bile. So when the bile form, when the liver forms the bile, it is being stored in the gallbladder. When it is not formed well, maybe high production of uh, bilirubin that we mentioned the other time, they can form a crystalline solid that will now block the bile ducts. This is how the crystalline solid can look like. You can see that it's a little hard and it can block the passage of fluid. So that is called gallstones. Liver cirrhosis is another liver disease that can result, though there are so many things that can result into liver cirrhosis. But one of the things um, that can result into it is excessive drinking of alcohol for a prolonged time. People enjoy alcohol, especially people, youth of tender age. They take lots of alcohol, not knowing that they are doing more harm to their liver than they can ever imagine. So the cells of the liver are damaged and become useless. And the tissue becomes fibrous, causing the liver to become hard and irregular. You can see this is a normal liver. This is how it should be. And look at what excessive drinking of alcohol has caused to the liver. It has become fibrous tissue. It has become hardened. It's now irregular. And this can never function well anymore. So this is one of the most dangerous diseases of the liver. Now, so far, we talked about the series of functions of the liver, the hemostatic function of the liver starting from regulation of uh, blood sugar, regulation of protein, fat metabolism, production of heat, inactivation of hormones, and the rest of them. Then we talked about the diseases of the liver and the signs to watch out for. So I want you to answer the following questions under uh, hemostasis that talks about uh, from the uh, previous presentation on the kidney and the liver. Thank you for listening.